Hey team, welcome back to my channel. The source code for this video is available on my GitHub account. Here's the URL. Let's learn about the SQL Server 2022 function date bucket. So I'm going to create a small table called a pound sample. All the pound means is this is a temporary table. Create this table. Now I'm going to insert some sample data. Now before we insert it, let's look what we have here. We have uh, the year 2023, and then we have January on the first row, February, and then March. Notice each three lines has a different amount of days for each month. So let's go ahead and insert that data, 11 rows, okay, cool. Now I'm gonna actually call our first date bucket, and I'm gonna use the date part month and my frequency will be one. Now event date is the name of our column. And then you can see I'm gonna get the count, I'm gonna get the number of days in the month. So then I'm gonna group by the date bucket, the same command I have here, and then I'm gonna order by the bucket. Let's see what happens here. So you can see here that I have a January, February, March, and then I have uh, four days, two days, and five days. So you can see four, two, and five. You can see that. Now, how did it know to start on January the 1st? And then the next bucket, February the 1st. And then the third bucket is in March. Now, let's go back to the signature. Notice, optionally, I said, the origin, the date that we kind of want this pattern to begin with, to start creating a sequence, is in the year 1900, January the 1st. Now using that pattern, I can then create monthly buckets. Now that might be complicated right now, but I'm gonna show you something that will clear that up. So in my second example, notice a one, two, three, so the fourth parameter is the origin. Remember it's optional. If it's, if you leave it out, I use that 1900 date. So here I'm saying, I want the dates to begin using the pattern 2000, April the 1st. Now, when I run this, what do you expect to happen? Well, it looks like I'm using the year, the month, and I want my period for month to begin on the 1st. Let us execute this SQL statement check out the output. We have our month output, and then you can see how we use the origin date, and we are starting on the first of each month. But what if I say, hmm, I want all my patterns to begin with on the 18th. So what does that mean? Well, that means my month doesn't begin on the first, it begins on the 18th. And that's how I want all my buckets to be created. So all my months, the month day begins on the 18th. Now when I execute this, let's see the change. Well, look at this, changed quite a bit. So I have a 12, 18 for three. That is, you know, cause when I was in January, when I came out to my January data, notice I have a couple of days before the 18th. So these three dates go back to a previous bucket, February, I mean, December of 22. There are three of them. Now, of course I can change this date to anything I want, you know, I can go in the future, I can go to the year, you know, 2080, if I re-execute this, year, month, day, okay, and he wants to start the period on the 18th, and that's what I've done here. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's do a few more examples on our real database so we can completely understand this. Here you can see, inside of my database, I have AdventureWorks 2019. If you go down to Tables, notice we'll be using a table called Purchasing Purchase Order Header. So this is the table we'll be messing with. So I say Use AdventureWorks 2019. That sets up my environment correctly. And then we're just going to go get some data to see how many rows we're messing with here. So you can see over here that we have 252 rows of data. Now, instead of me showing all the hour, minute, seconds, we can actually cast that to just the date and just change the way that will look in the rest of these SQL statements, okay? So same data, I just changed the way that we're gonna look at that order date. 
Now here's our first date bucket example. Um, from our previous example, I showed you date bucket has four parameters. If you only use three of them, it will use the default value for the origin. Now, if I declare a variable, I can put that in the fourth and then it would actually use add origin, right? Does that make sense? So, but first we'll run it without using an origin. That means it will use this default pattern. Now that pattern goes like this, year, month, day, and hey, the day starts on the first. So notice here, I'm using the month. I wanna get frequency is one month, and let's go ahead and execute this. So notice here, the first data is January the 1st, right? Now remember, I'm at the month, so notice when I'm coming down here, and then we get to the second, notice it just increments the month. But my pattern says year, month, day. I'm only using the first for the month. Now, if we change this to week and date part, then it will change, but we're using month and I'm incrementing it by one. Now, if I wanna make my buckets just a little bit tighter, I can say two here. So every two months, I want it in there. That will uh, change accordingly. So here, this is just an example to either use the default value when it's not being used, or if I want to use my own, you know, like bring your own origin date, then uh, we can put that in there. Now notice the pattern now begins monthly. It begins on the 12th of the month. And when I execute that, notice all my patterns are on the 12th. So it'll be February the 12th. In this next example, notice I'm using an origin value. Then our output, notice it actually goes back. Even though I'm saying, give me all the dates from you know, 12 to 13, for our bucket, remember buckets are different. They're a series of sequence values. And this one, because we're using the 12th, this date was before the 12th. So I have to go back to 2011, January the 12th. That is that bucket. Notice all of these buckets for the year are only January. And they're January because one, my origin, and two, I'm at the year. In our next example, you can see I'm using the origin. Here's our pattern, year, month, day. Notice my day begins on the fifth. I'm saying months. Now my frequency now is every three months. So I come down there and I look at my output and notice we have January the 5th, three months later, April the 5th, three months later, July the 5th. I think you're starting to get this. Now, instead of using month, I could actually say quarter. And we'll say one, and I have to change it down here in my group by as well. And let's go and execute that. And guess what? We're getting the same periods. And that's all there is to date bucket, a series generator.